Welcome back. Uh, we've been following the trial of Gerard Ackerman, who faces no less than 730 charges, mostly associated with an alleged child sex abuse ring. To discuss, uh, we're joined now uh, by from uh, uh, Advocacy Group, Women and Men Against Child Abuse, uh, Head of Advocacy, Luke Lampracht. Uh, Luke, thank you for being with us. So let's just uh, bring viewers up to speed. After uh, this man denied running a sex ring yesterday, there was evidence presented in court today, I understand, messages. Uh, the details are so graphic that we weren't able to broadcast sound uh, from the court. How shocking and how compelling is the evidence against him? Look, it's, it's absolutely shocking. I think, you know, when people start, you know, thinking about the law and they have charges like uh, child pornography or sexual abuse, it almost sanitizes it because it's sort of quite clinical and the legal definitions are quite technical. But when you start hearing about the the, the acts that they were ex sort of exchanging between adults using children for money, we, we end up in a, in a space where you, you actually hear what these children endured while they were being abused for the sexual pleasure of these men while making money for Mr. Ackerman. And uh, I mean, as you said, it's, it's sort of the stuff you don't even want to um, sort of talk about in public because it, it's just too, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, mm. it, it's just horrendous. So, so if the court accepts these messages and the evidence, then it will find that he was selling boys for sex uh, and, and boys were raped, is that correct? <laughs> Right, so the, <clears throat> one of the big things that the media reported on was the fact that there was 174 dismissals. So he, he, was, he didn't have to mount a defense for two of the rape charges against him because the, the witnesses didn't present evidence that there was rape. Now, those 174 dismissals are regular things in criminal cases where they're saying that, you know, the state hasn't provided a case for the defense to answer to, and as a result, you know, we don't have to defend ourselves. So that's two of the rape cases where Mr. Ackerman himself was accused of rape. Now, for the rest of it, the what must be remembered is that there is, first of all, the advertising of children. Secondly, there is the transportation of children. Thirdly, there's the housing of children. Fourthly, there's the, um, the transaction with other adult men to have sex with these children in the property that was secured by Mr. Ackerman, where he transported the children who he had advertised. Now, for me, that's, th that's the bigger element of the case, and that's the trafficking component. And it looks like, for me, the, you know, if, if you have been part of all of those things, without you, the offence could not have occurred. And as a result, the, the remainder of the charges, besides the two 174 dismissals, which is he's actually raping these young men, um, are, yeah, I mean, they, they are looking extremely strong because it appears that Mr. Ackman is not really denying that these things occurred. Yeah, uh, facilitating what went on. Another factor has been the age, and he's... Uh said that everybody was of age, uh, 16 years or older, I understand he, he admitted, uh, he said it was consensual sex with the 16 year old, but are you still concerned there were boys uh, well below 16 who cannot uh, legally consent to sex involved? Look, there's a, there's a very subtle legal thing involved here as well. You know, they, you know, you can be an extremely vulnerable person who is exploited by other people. For example, in a trafficking context, uh, you are trafficked across a border because you are very desperate to get across the border to get work because, you know, you um, are going to starve in your own country. So the, the use of vulnerable people is actually acknowledged in the law. So the fact that they were of consensual sexual age is not the main point. The main point is that these boys were trafficked under false pretenses by, a, it appears, Mr. Ackerman's own admission that they were coming, and the one piece of evidence I heard by one of the fathers was that the boy came up here to make a life for himself, and then when he saw what he had to do, he was too ashamed to tell his father what he had to do because he was brought under false pretenses. Now, that's, that, that's the essence of trafficking. So 
consent is a complex thing in you know when you are lured um, by false pretenses into sort of industries that you did not actually consent to when you arrived. You did not knowingly come with those intentions. All right, final question. And if you've just tuned in, uh, please be warned that we may discuss some graphic content here. Uh, we, we may have to, uh, given the topic, which is Gerard Ackerman's uh, case. Uh, Luke, there's a, a bigger issue here. Let's end with this. Uh, yesterday, when he testified, there was an exchange and it seemed he didn't understand if a happy ending uh, after a massage was a sex act or not, or, or maybe chose not to understand. Uh, but what, what happened? happened here in a male massage parlor, does it raise concern about massage parlors in general, employing sometimes uh, vulnerable people, like you say, foreigners, don't, not always uh, speaking the language, male or, or female? Are you concerned about that? No, we, no, we absolutely are. And I mean, this, this is not the first case like this we have dealt with. I mean, I've, I've had a case that is very, very similar in nature. And again, you know, they are saying that the young women were of consensual age, but they were lured from an Asian country to come here under false pretenses. And once here, you are now, you, you're basically entrapped. And as a result, you know, you, you don't have the full ability to consent and not consent because it's that coercive control that we talk about in any circumstance like domestic violence or cults or you know people who are trafficked coercive control is a real thing and you are not fully consensual when you are brought into these circumstances even though you can consent to the sex act the whole context into which you are brought is under false pretenses and you are coerced through the control they have over you. And we are deeply concerned about that on a, a variety of levels. And, and finally, very quickly, Paul Kennedy was an acting judge and an advocate. He was also charged but committed suicide. Has this case shocked you because of the caliber um, of, of that one person involved uh, that we know of, uh, even involved in, in the justice system? Well, the, the, the evidence given around Mr. Kennedy was absolutely damning. And I mean, Mr. Ackerman largely blames Mr. Kennedy for most things Mr. Kennedy did. I mean, there's there's evidence given about Mr. Kennedy being, um, you know, in hospital with COVID and him getting sent pornography to cheer him up. There's evidence around Mr. Kennedy that when he disclosed his HIV status to Mr. Ackerman, Mr. Ackerman told him to cheer up. It's not so bad, you know. So the, the, the evidence against Mr. Ackerman is damning. And I'm not surprised at all because, in fact, the vast majority of the men, we uh, assume that we think there's about 150 of them based on the evidence, the vast majority of these men are men of power and privilege who have the, the financial resources to put these things in place and then to keep them silent. So I'm not surprised at all. And there are many, many more like Mr. Kennedy out there of the same caliber who uh, we would really like that this court case exposes. Mm. Sure. All right. We follow the case. Thank you very much. That was Luke Lumbracht, Head of Advocacy at Women and Men Against Child Abuse.